Today, we will be learning about plastics and their effect on the environment and in the world. Our Earth is made up of breathtaking landscapes and gorgeous views. Over the years, humans have made have industrialized the planet and turned it into much more than we could ever imagine. Humans have made empires, nations, life-saving technology, and much more. However, in the process of doing so, humans began to pollute the Earth with remains of this progress, and one of the most impactful remains left behind is plastic. What once was pristine beaches, green lush forests, and rivers jumping with fish is now turned into a wasteland for plastic. We will dive deeper to explore exactly how we got to this point, the facts about recycling, where the plastic goes, the effects of the plastic in the ocean, and what humans can do about this growing issue. We first want to go over how this all began. Plastic is made up of long chains of atoms that make the material strong, malleable, moisture resistant, and lightweight. These attractive qualities are what led to the overconsumption around the world. Invented over about a century ago, plastic production increased heavily during World War II. The need to preserve more natural resources made plastics become popular due to the replacement of synthetic materials. It was used to make helmet liners, body armor, parachutes, and more. It is said that during World War II, the plastic production increased by 300% in the United States. This increase continued even after the war. According to the author Susan Frankel, product after product, market after market, plastics tra challenged traditional materials and won, taking the place of steel in cars, paper and glass in packaging, and wood in furniture. However, the popularity of plastic began to decline in the late 1900s due to the inability to decompose and was thrown into the environment. Recy recycling was created, however, large portions of plastic still ended up in landfills. This is because not all plastics can be recycled, which we will discuss later in this video. Within the last decade, plastic production continues to increase. According to plasticpollution.org, an estimated 299 million tons of plastic was produced in 2013, representing a 4% increase over 2012 and confirming an upward trend over the past years. This has created a throwaway culture with items such as grocery bags, plastic water bottles, straws, food wrappers, and countless others. Such plastics are only used for a short period of time, like bringing in your groceries from the store to your home, but will remain in landfills and the environment for hundreds of years. Later in the video, we will see how this can cause harm and major consequences to, the, to our planet and life on it. Although we might see recycling as a solution to the pollution of plastic, there are some cons to this system. Not all plastics can even be recycled. So before we think recycling is the answer, it is important to learn what can and cannot actually be recycled. Next, we're gonna be going over what type of plastics can and cannot be recycled. So plastic is one of the most commonly utilized materials in the commercial world. It is truly everywhere and most people cannot even distinguish which everyday items are what kind of plastic. Many of the synthetic organic materials classified as plastics and resins are made up of polymers. Polymers are essentially a substance that has a molecular structure made up of primarily or only a large number of similar units bonded together. The indiv individual units that, are, that make up polymers are called monomers and usually come from crude oil turned into gasoline that are combined to form larger mon molecules using polymerization. Another way to think about polymers is, is as if it was a freight train with many cars connected to allow it to carry out its intended function of transporting them. In this situation, the individual freight cars would be the monomers that bond together to create a polymer chain in plastics. A little known fact, fun fact about all plastic products is that they have, or at least should have, a resin code that is stamped into the number ranging from one to seven inside a small triangle made of arrows. The number inside the triangle actually corresponds to a different type of plastic that may or may not be able to be recycled. If the number in the triangle of arrows is a one or two, then that product can be recycled. The one indicates that the product is composed of polyethylene terephthalate or PET slash PETE for short. These products are some of the most commonly held items that a person can buy today. These include bottles of, wa of soda, water, some other drinks, oil containers, peanut butter jars, and containers for many other popular food items. The two 
indicates that the product is composed of high density polyethylene or HDPE for short. This type of plastic is also extremely common and is used to make products such as milk jugs, shampoo bottles, cleaning products, and detergent containers. Next, we have the number three, and this is another fairly common plastic in today's world. Three indicates that the product consists of polyvinyl chloride or PVC for short. This is a soft, flexible plastic that is found in a ra large range of household items. It can also be seen in plastic tubing for things like plumbing, kids' toys, plastic trays, and furniture. PVC is one of the only out of the main types of plastic that absolutely cannot be recycled. And finally, we have the numbers four through seven, which are plastics that sometimes can be recycled depending on where you live and what your local recycling plants accept. Number four indicates that it is made out of low density poly polyethylene or LDPE and is used to make grocery bags, bags for newspapers, sliced bread loaf bags, and fresh produce bags. Number five is made out of polypropylene or PP and can be found in containers for things like yogurt, sour cream, and so many other products. Number six shows that it is made out of polystyrene or PS and is used to make disposable coffee cups, packing peanuts, coolers, or to-go containers. And number seven shows that it is made out of any of the other plastics that do not necessarily fall into this category or are a combination of multiple plastics that cannot always be easily recycled. If recycling is not an option, you can always check out services like TerraCycle, which offer free nationwide recycling programs for hard to recycle waste streams. And they offer different recycling programs and accept things like co contact lenses, makeup products, e-waste, oral care products, cigarette waste, and so much more that cannot usually be um, recycled. Plastic is an extremely helpful material that has quite literally transformed the world we live in today. As we mentioned earlier, plastics and material that is made up of synthetic polymers provided by petroleum and other fossil fuels, and as helpful as the material may be, there is one slight caveat. Plastic take near, takes nearly half of a century, 450 years or so, to decompose. So between now and the passage of those 450 years, where does our plastic waste go? Well, according to our plastic industry's promotional campaigns, plastics are taken, recycled, and turned into other useful items that are then also eventually recycled and turned into something else once again. This isn't really the case though. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of our plastic waste is shipped overseas to countries that are still in the process of developing. This means that our plastic, the plastic that we use on a daily basis, is being shipped to countries that have yet to develop an effective waste management system, and it's just piling up. Many people end up living amongst the waste given that they have no established recycling facilities that the plastic could be taken to in order to be properly disposed of. Last year, nearly 68,000 shipping containers worth of plastic waste were shipped to countries like that of Bangladesh, Laos, and Ethiopia, some of the poorest countries in the world. Given the amount of waste a single household can produce, one might wonder where it all ends up. As it turns out, many Americans still believe the promotional ads that were previously mentioned and have no real idea as to the actual location where their trash ends up. With the continued exportation of our plastic waste to these poor countries, it begins to pile up and begins to enter into rivers and streams and ultimately ends up in the ocean where it can kill wildlife. Next, we're going to talk about plastics in the ocean and why it is harmful. As we have discussed early in the lesson, it is a fact that there are huge amounts of plastic that have infiltrated the oceans over the years, but it has not been known exactly how much pollution people have dumped into the oceans. However, a study has been done that has shown that there are approximately 5.25 trillion particles weighing 268,940 tons of plastic in the ocean. This is, a, this is an astounding information when you think about the fact that at one point in time, our oceans were free of plastic, and it is also important to recognize that these numbers and acknowledge that humans have made a mess of something that once was so pristine. This pie chart shows how much plastic makes up the amount of litter that is found in the oceans. Plastic enters the oceans in many ways, such as through rivers, blown into waterways by wind, waste from industries, and then this waste is dispersed easily through the ocean by the water current. This plastic pollution is spread out across the ocean easily because of its buoyancy and durability, which means that it is smoothly carried to many parts of the ocean. This means that even if there are areas of the world where people reduce pollution, their beaches, oceans, and marine life can still be affected by pollution due to the other areas that are not taking proper precautions. To summarize, if not everyone does their part to reduce the amount of pollution, 
all as aspects of ocean life have the potential of being polluted. So why is plastics in the ocean truly so terrible? One re reason that we have already acknowledged that plastic pollution spreads easily, which means that many forms of marine life will come into contact with pollution. This marine life is then negative, negatively affected by plastic, either through ingestion or entanglement, which can lead to sickness and death for marine life, which disrupts the natural cycle of the ocean. Another issue is that plastics sit in the ocean. They can release microscopic amounts of toxic chemicals that do not occur naturally in the ocean. And this disrupts marine life, which is the same marine life that humans consume. One example would be styrofoam, which is a plastic that has been found to release a chemical called styrene monomer that is toxic to humans. And styrofoam is frequently found in the ocean because it is something that humans use. Humans often eat seafood, which is the same marine life that has spent its, in, its lifetime living and ingesting chemicals released by, pl by plastics such as styrofoam. Therefore, when humans eat marine life, they are consuming chemicals that are released from plastics without even knowing, and this is just one of the unforeseen dangerous effects that plastic pollution in the ocean has. The last takeaway about plastic waste in the ocean that makes it so dangerous is that it's quite difficult to remove the waste. One may look at the problem and suggest that it's simple to gather up a group of friends and comb the beach looking for trash to rid the beach of, but the sad reality is that this is, is not this simple. While plastic is not easily degradable, it is typically broken down into microplastics, which are small fragments of the original piece of plastic, and these are almost impossible to get out of the ocean. To conclude, plastic is abundantly found in the oceans because of humans, and its detrimental effects can reach anything from the ocean chemical levels to your seafood dinner plate. Lastly, there are ways that we can help reduce the amount of plastic in our environment. As we've learned just how plastics can negatively impact our environment, it's important that we consider ways to reduce our use of plastic. While it can be difficult and sometimes costly to use more environmentally friendly products, little changes can have big effects. According to the article, Where Does Your Plastic Go? Global Investigation Reveals America's Dirty Secret, more than a ton of plastic each year is sent to different countries, most of which don't have the resources to combat their own plastic waste. This growing problem has granted opportunities for individuals to be creative in how they can reduce their plastic use in their daily lives. In the article, eight simple ways to reduce your plastic use. Some ideas include using reusable bags and containers when shopping at the grocery store, buying a stainless steel water bottle and swapping plastic straws, lids, or flatware for reusable alternatives. Another example of cutting back on plastics includes buying products in bulk to reduce the amount of packaging that gets thrown away. There are also options such as picking up trash within the community or even reusing plastic bags as trash can liners as this can go a long way and doesn't require spending money. In the end, reducing your overall plastic waste and switching to reusable products and reducing plastic consumption is in no way perfect. It's important to understand that there's no easy fixes to some products that contain plastics, but rather making small changes in life when possible. While plastics may offer convenience, this comes at a price. We hope that you've enjoyed our presentation and that this offers you not only with a background of what plastics are and what they do to the environment, but also provides you with the ideas on how to actively reduce your plastic consumption. And here are our sources and thank you for watching.